The Dakota Gold mysteries contain mature content including violence, sexual situations, alcohol, drug and other substance use, and profane language. This episode also includes mind control, manipulation, medical experimentation, and character death. Where do they leave them? Who? What? The people Metalmouth leaves. The ones that have been edited. Where do you find them? It's possible to get across the city in a matter of minutes. The right hat company, the right instructions, the right bribe, and you're where you need to be without regard to traffic, legality, or road safety. I arrived at the abandoned swap shop while there was still time to do something. Or at least, that's what I hoped. Where do you find them? Only Screwloose had been in the hab inside the shop, perched awkwardly on the back of his chair, her focus on something on the table in front of her. I started talking before I'd gotten the rebreather fully away from my mouth, and she spun to face me, flinching further into herself the closer I came. I tried to keep my voice level, tried to keep my posture non-threatening, but every second's delay carried success a little further out of my reach. Put whatever you've got in your head that still remembers human thought and answer me! Let go of me. Something in them changed, quickly and entirely, as though a switch had been flipped. The person in front of me was no longer the cringing, confused ruin of an individual I'd become accustomed to, and was instead... a berserker. At the very edge of their self-control. Take your hands off of me and... step... away. I did so. Cautiously. Her entire demeanor had altered now. She stood to her full height. Had become... broader somehow. Withered shoulders and shrunken muscles seeming to... become whole and healthy. And her eyes. There's a d- door in one of the f- former procedure rooms. We've never been able to get it open. Her eyes have become sharp, calculating, and prodigiously intelligent. And familiar. I strained my supplemental senses, but as before, my mind's touch had gone silent. It has an access panel. It's a simple electronic keypad. No biometric locks. I've thought it could be bypassed or overridden, but I have not been able to obtain the proper tools or focus. Show me. Let's have a look. Ooh. Oh, off the rack commercial holdback wearing. Well, you can crack that with just about any old digital bumper key. Which, of course, I have. Up to this point, I hadn't allowed myself to slow down long enough to consider that I might be making a mistake. But while the bumper cycled, and with nothing else to occupy my mind, I began to feel these thick fingers of uncertainty. I could be too late. Whatever was to be done to Roxanne Prime might have already been completed, and she'd be on her way back to her principal profligate of a husband. Or she might never have been here at all. Weston Garrison had the entirety of Cloud City at her disposal. It would be fundamentally stupid to have whatever facility was used to edit people at the same site where those people were abandoned. But... My Midas touch said this was the place. 
Everything I'd seen of both Garrison the Younger and the Elder pointed to an absolute confidence in their immunity from any and all consequences, coupled with a self-satisfied and lofty contempt for others. Why would they require multiple locations when one would do? No average, simple-minded citizen of the lower floors would realise what was being done. And if by some miracle they did, who'd care? She might be here. She must be here. Come on, come on. There. The door swung open, revealing a hole in the floor, a ladder vanishing into his gaping black moor. Without hesitating, without so much as looking over my shoulder, I started down three rungs at a time. The tunnel under the swap shop was dank and damp, and smelled of sulphur and oxidising clostridium. But underneath it all was the unmistakable subperceptual scent of two bodies, one biological, one plastic. They'd come this way, and recently. The light was dim, illumination provided by orange safety lamps at far too infrequent intervals. But it led away in just a single direction. Here. My doorstep, maybe. Hmm. Two hours ago. So probably need another one before you get going. All right, just put it right... Ugh, Lord. Not this one again. Mm, yep. Seems like your work isn't sticking, Doc. I heard them before I saw them. The tunnel's concrete walls carried their voices down to me. I could almost have been in the same room. As I told you, this process is still experimental. Granted, we've come a long way toward perfecting it, but it is, as yet, far from an exact science. Hmm. Seems like it should maybe be a wee bit closer to exact science, seeing as how many times you've run experiments. <laughs> that is simply not the way medical discovery works. The floor under my feet was rough, uneven, and dotted with puddles of unpleasantness and mysterious liquid. I moved as silently as I could, hoping my footsteps weren't as audible to them as their conversation was to me. She said to give her a tune up. So give her a goddamn tune-up. This subject is dangerously close to full ego collapse as it is. Another intervention and editing would be pushing an already faltering personality core into increased fragility and the That's risk great, to Doc. But I already told you what the boss said. Yes, but you don't understand. We've seen so much success with this one. I won't risk spoiling it in order to marginally increase conformity. Are you questioning Ms. McScarrison? Uh, no. Uh, of course not. Because I can go back and tell her you said you wouldn't do the job. There's no need to do that. She's got dozens of you brainy types lined up. If you don't work out. <sighs> dozens lined up? There is not a single other scientist, researcher, or clinician in this entire benighted city that can do work of this type. I invented the process, and the device. The schematics and upwarding parameters are not to be shared. Hmm. The boss know that? Of course she does. And she also knows that I keep them safely stored in my personality core such they cannot be stolen or replicated. I am not disposable. Makes sense, Ron. Hmm. Whatever. Just do your goddamn job and I won't have to bother the woman in charge. All right, all right. Dozens. Does he think highly specialized neurosomatic technicians spontaneously generate? Or that I would be vacuous enough to use external documentation? Or, or show others my methods? What a brainless, empty-headed meatbag. The tunnel ended in a door. Wide open, spewing forth intense white light. I couldn't get closer without rendering myself highly visible. But even remaining in the safety of the shadows, I could see the other room clearly. It was laboratory. And an operating room. What? Where? I, 
Archie? Did, did, did I fall asleep? I thought you said you dosed it. I said it was about to wear off. Well, put it under again. They had Roxanne Prime restrained in a chair in the precise centre of the gleaming ceramic box of a room. Her head was gripped in a metal halo, bristling with wires, probes and sensors. Metal mouth, in their hulked, reinforced soma, seemed incongruously out of place. Towering over both Roxanne and a much smaller person in a spotless lab coat. The lab coat would be easy to manage, but I'd already had one run it with Metal Mouth, and I wasn't eager for a rematch. Just leave already. Go on. Shut it. I heard something. Shit. I... Why am I... Mix Angstrom? Put it under! Ow! What? Uh, uh, uh. Afraid of a little girl, Doc. The subject runs the risk of damaging itself if conscious. Sure. So, you gonna do this or what? I don't have all day. Good, then leave already, you asshole. The work cannot be rushed. Whatever. Fine. Oh no. Uh, what do you think you're doing? Waiting. You, um, you don't need to do that. Mm. Easier. I would just have to come back to take it up city when you're done. <laughs> um, well, that, that is, I, I, I would prefer if you just... Get to work, um, Doc. Oh, yes, of, of course. As the doctor made adjustments to the device imprisoning Roxanne Prime, muttering incomprehensibly all the while, Metalmouth settled into the room's only chair, crossed his arms, leaned back, and closed his eyes, looking for all the world like a man taking a well-deserved nap. Parabolics installed above his ears belied that fact, continuing their slow pan around the room. And to my trained eye, the tension in his hands and elbows made it clear he was entirely awake. It was not the ideal situation in which to attempt a rescue. But I was running out of time. Roxanne twitched restlessly in her drug stupor. Metalmouth sighed, chin sinking deeper into their chest. A Philistines, all of them. This is science. It is about the advancement of humanity, not whatever that is. Telling me to adjust it like it's an, an off-the-rack soma or an appliance. She was accompanied by her own stream of muttered invective. Crossing the painfully white room, sliding her hands into a pair of storage grips. There was the familiar double click of maglock limbs detaching, and she turned back bare wrist posts ready to be fitted with sterile appendages. I'd wanted an advantage, a tip of the scales in my favour, however slight. This was the only one I would get. So I took it. <coughs> that thing you feel right there, it's a gun. A real one. Fast projectiles. I pull this trigger, your core shatters. Yourself get sprayed all over the wall. <laughs> Not enough left to reconstruct. No, please. What do you want? Money? I can get you money. <laughs> or, or that. The, the subject? I can give it to you. Just don't, don't kill me. <laughs> He's not going to kill you. And what do you know, smart guy? If you kill her, I kill you. I mean, I don't care either way. She's a peasant twerp. But I imagine you might your core inside your spine. Metalmouth hadn't got up. He'd hardly moved. Hadn't even raised his head. He just opened the outer lids of his eyes. The mesh membrane still drawn. So what happens now then? You get the fuck gone and forget this place exists. Or what? 
Or I pull off your head and put it back on wrong way round. You know, really not sure I'd fancy that. Then turn loose the egghead. You can still walk out of here. What about her? This is about her. What else could it be about? <laughs> I thought you were a corporate spy. We'll be a logistics or a vision, maybe. But this is about Finish her. that sentence and I will end her. Please don't. <laughs> Damn. What's it to you, anyway? She a favourite dream girl? Look, here's how this is going to go. You get up, nice and slow. Let her out of whatever that is, then back away. I'm taking this one with us. I'll let it go when we're back above ground. No. It happened too fast for even my enhanced sensor to catch. One moment, the huge body was slumped in a chair. The next, it was standing, holding a smoking gun. Oh. Oh dear. The doctor let out a breath and became nothing more than a human-shaped bag of dead meat and plastic. Why did you- Cora's fine. We'll be slaver. I'm gonna give you one more chance here. You go to the count of three, and then I start shooting. And with you, I'm aiming for the core. So this was it then. This was the way the case ended. I go for the girl and get shot for my trouble. Or I take the out, turn tail and run. I spend the rest of my life avoiding my face in the mirror. Two choices. Simple, clean and binary. Stay or go. The bang or the whimper. Her or me. I started to move. I was thrown bodily across the room. And into the wall. His scarred face swam into focus above me. Get the fuck up and out, soldier. Get her and go. Some training never leaves you. Sir, I thought I'd long since lost the berserker neuromuscular training. I was wrong. As I got to my feet, ingrained patterns came back as though I was still a blue. But I didn't have time to reflect on how that made me feel. Not while I was a civilian to save. Up close, the device into which Roxanne Prime had been strapped was more torture implement than medical machinery. Rods and probes pressed against and sometimes into her face and neck. Electrodes were applied to her temples, sensor pads over her eyes. I disconnected her as carefully as I was able. But even so, she began to whimper in pain. Then she was free. I shouldered her and turned toward the tunnel, just in time to catch Lou performing her own operation. Give her to me. She wasn't remotely hindered by the still unconscious Roxanne Prime, nor whatever she held clenched in her fist. Lou led the way back, through the tunnel, up the ladder, and into her nest. She eased the woman down onto her pallet and crumbled. Hey, hey, Lou, Lou, talk to me. Are you hurt? Right. Cried as rain. <coughs> right, sir. Fuck, you're bleeding. Let me. Got a bit stirred up inside. Scrambled guts, but. No cutting. No more. No more cut. 
Move your arm, damn it. You... Oh, fuck, he shot you. I can't... Where's the... There's no exit wound. <laughs> it's back inside, isn't it? You can feel it in there. Bouncing around, kind of... <coughs> tickles. <laughs> we... We need to... You need a doctor. Uh, no... No, Doctor, just... Lou, you've been shot for fuck's sake. No. Doctors. Her eyes blazed, and she gripped my wrist with that baffling, implacable strength. Okay, fine. No doctor. I said no. And I'm not calling you a fucking doctor. I am calling in an assist before you bleed out on a goddamn trash heap. I was going to hate this. Val, I need your help. <sighs> right. Put her on the bed. She's the one that's hurt. Ah, yes, my, that is a lot of blood. Um, you, sit there. Sit? Good. All right. Coda, are you... Fine. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, Val. I promise. I swear. Good. Wonderful. Then if you would please get the hell out of the way. You are doing no one any good hovering like that. I've got Kelsey on the way. If you could hold on just a little bit longer, Mix. No. No, Doctor. Wouldn't dream of it. Put pressure on... Ah. Um, here. Use this. That is rather... saturated. Oh, your hand. Your hand is also injured. Oh, no it's not. You're holding... What is... Is that someone's core? Why do you have a bloody personality? No, don't tell me. It doesn't matter. Just... Hold this. There. Press down. The trip from the abandoned building to Val's up-city hab was a smudged and brightly coloured blur, punctuated by sirens. I put enough credit into the hack to purchase all the bells and whistles, including a very realistic replica of blue air car markings. It was a gamble, but one worth making. Lou refused to let go of Roxanne Prime, even as the unconscious woman's blood soaked through her own clothes and began to stain Lou's. Roxanne herself twitched and mumbled groggily, but showed no signs of rousing. I... I did my best to think of nothing at all. Right, okay. What was she given? Dakota, what was she given? What does she have in her system? Um, I, uh, Flexidox, I think. Or maybe Dex Lancetam? It, it was some kind of dental patch. Hmm, right. Likely an Alglugin inhibitor then. I've probably... Yes, I've definitely got something that will... Right, this should... No doctors. Ow, no drugs. No, it's not... Ow! All right, here, look. I'm stepping away. No drugs. <sighs> Is she... <sighs> no. Get her back to the bed. I had managed to call my Roxanne. My memory only retained the dimmest echo of our exchange. But she arrived at Tamarin Tower minutes after we did. Her blue eyes were wide with fear and glowed cerulean in the streetlights. If Val was surprised to see her with us, he didn't show it. And instead, bowed over her hand like a courtier, while simultaneously ordering myself and Lou about. How could I help? You are perfect just where you are, dear. We've got this all well in hand. And you know what? 
for just a moment, it seems as though we actually might. Where is she? She's right there. I won't move her unless it's all right. Uh, where? Uh, there. See? Right there. No, uh, no, 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 no. Where is she? Um, uh, Mix Roxanne, if you wouldn't mind coming over here for a moment, please? No. <sighs> like a sense of fear. It burned at my Midas touch like a magnesium flare. Um, Dakota, your assistance, if you wouldn't mind? I tried hard to focus my thoughts into coherence. But I couldn't. They seemed to resist all attempts to be put in order. I... I... I, I don't know. Her... She's... Her... Her... My... my mm, safe as houses. Safe and sound. Her... Home again. Home again. With a picket fence and, and a... And a doghouse in the yard. Her. You mean Roxy? Her, her. Where is she? Oh, fuck. Val. Val, we left someone at Already the... on it. Address? It was, uh, 3773 S. Spoke 24. Borough 73A. Rimwood. Yes, hello, David. So sorry to bother you at this hour, but... <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. You are a darling man. I'm sorry to be so abrupt, but I've got a little situation, and I need a favor. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. We're all perfectly fine. A friend has just found herself in a... an untenable position, and could use a lift. Back to the tower, yes. 3773S, Spoke 24, Borough 73A, Rimwood. <laughs> it is rather a rough borough, yes. You see what I mean about untenable. Immediately, please, it's quite urgent. Tell her... Tell her Valentine and Dakota are enjoying screwdrivers together as planned, and she is sorely missed. Why, David, I had no idea you felt that way. All right, well, fine, if you insist, but please do hurry. Ta. Authorizing access to Penthouse D. Hyena form Morph Soma, username... Roxy. Username Roxy. Bring her straight up, no page required. She's on her way. Now, will you please lay back down? Is she... All right. Why ever would you think she wasn't? I... see. By the by, whose personality core are they holding, Dakota? What? Oh, the neurosomaticists, I'd imagine. And who's that? The ship that's been editing people. Oh, I see. And, um, what exactly are they planning to do with it? I have absolutely no idea. Huh. Dakota, why do they have- Oh my god! What happened? What did you- Are you-, are you it's, yeah. Oh god, I didn't know what- I, I, I came back and there was- It's- It's-, it's Fuck! The, the clinic, that's- it, it- 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 It's on fire! What? 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 On fire? Tried. I tried to get in. I thought they were- I- 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 I-
burning its all gone. The fuck am I supposed to do now? <sighs> Gotta. <coughs> Gotta. Bill, and you. <coughs> Dog house. <laughs> oh, thank God. I thought you were dead. God, I thought. I thought you. We're in there, burnt on the dead. How many? How? How? How many hands? <laughs> Two. How many? <laughs> how many feet? Four. How? How many? <laughs> She's dying. Fucking do something. <sighs> Summer's too tough t to kill. Brains all scrambled, right? <laughs> To fuck up. Oh. To die. <laughs> Too much of a crazy bastard. All, all the king's horses. <laughs> Have you contacted the last one? The simulacrum? Hmm, yes. I called the hostel. She's gone. No forwarding. forwarding number? No. Okay, did you maybe try to... I offered financial incentive. She didn't leave anything. Well, well should, I don't know, should you try to find her? I, for one, think she deserves to be left alone. Okay, but she what She doesn't if... want to be found, Val. And I think I know them all well enough to be sure that now that she's decided to hide, she'll stay hidden. All right, if you really think so. Now what? Now, I would like to sleep. Just in case you forgot, I've got multiple broken ribs. <laughs> Coda, that is the most sensible thing you've said all night. And that was that. The case was over. I'd found the corpus, unearthed the perpetrator, and saved the girl. I'd succeeded. But it didn't feel that way. How it felt was wrong. Roxanne Prime and her two iterations were safe. Or as safe as they could be, all things considered. But they were changed. And those changes seemed to be irreparable. Without the assistance of stimulants, it took several hours for Roxanne Prime to fully wake. And once she had, it had taken several more to explain and for her to understand what had happened. What had been done to herself. Herselves. The true nature of her darling Archie. She resisted convincing. Insisted for hours that he loved her and would never do anything to harm her. Which, all told, was likely the most reasonable response, given that was what her perception and memory both insisted to be true. But underneath the editing inflicted on her by the garrisons, she remained fundamentally Roxanne. And with time, and the steadfast testimony of two other selves, she accepted the truth. I thought it would take some time for her to believe it, but time was now something she had in abundance. Valentine offered all three of the Roxanne's new identities, and Lou as well. Complete with fresh somas, meta-DNA masks, and extensively documented fictional histories. My client and Roxanne Prime had taken him up on it, and been spirited away to parts unknown. A different borough, a different floor, possibly even off Cloud City entirely. 
Val never told me, and I never asked. Roxy had chosen to remain as she was. The hyena form suited her, she said. She thought she'd keep it a while. She'd gotten used to having functional teeth and claws, and it'd be a shame to give them up now that she knew how to use them. She'd also airily informed me that she and Screwloose had worked out where they would be going and what they'd be doing there. I completely refused to elaborate any further. The thought the swap shop was gone, having burned suspiciously thoroughly prior to the arrival of the fire suppression brigade. I'd taken a poke around once the ash had gone cold, of course, but the entrance to the underground lab had been obliterated, either by the fire or external intervention, like it was never there. When the flimsy report was released, it mentioned neither death nor soma destruction, which of course meant nothing at all except to push the fate of Metalmouth further into the realm of speculation. As for the neurosomaticist... <laughs> Keeping them, aren't we? Got the genie in the bottle? Stopped up all nice and tight. Wrapped and wrapped and wrapped under wraps. And uh, she's going to stay there, won't she? <laughs> she won't even know she's been de-sleeved. Why? Ah, ran the cutting room, didn't she? Flipped switches, powered the saws, and held the, held the knives. No. Why hold on to her? Shatter the damn thing, I'm done with it. <sighs> because she ran the cutting room? If she created the editing process, she might know how to undo it. Oh. Figure out how, with the proper encouragement. And we, <laughs> we, we, we may, may, may have many, many ways to um, encourage her. <laughs> and it's not going to stop the editing tech from getting out there. But bottling up its inventor might at least slow it down a little while. It was something. A sliver of consequence. A fragment of justice. But it wasn't enough. Even if Metalmouth and the scientists had burned, trapped inside the ceramic torture chamber they built, it still wouldn't be enough. A day after the Roxans had departed to begin their new lives, I came across something on the feeds. The Neurosomatic Technology Group is excited to announce the release of the NST Galaxy 45, the first hyperreactive microcore, and the flagship product of our newly established flexibility, fluidity, and responsivity division. Spearheaded by my son Archer, FFNR intends to forge ahead into the future of personality cores, cementing NST as Cloud City's indisputable leader in neurosomatic manufacturing and innovation and securing the financial interests of our shareholders. Modern uh, life requires modern solutions. Modern solutions require modern technology. Modern technology requires forward-thinking, risk-taking uh, entrepreneurs with the drive and determination to make the hard choices. We at NST are those entrepreneurs. And they lives ruined. And they're getting applause. It's not fair. Oh, has life become fair now? I wasn't informed. Oh, fuck off, Val. My brother had insisted I stay with him until my ribs had finished healing. Well, finished healing properly. And I'd agreed. Given what he'd done for my clients, it seemed only fair to humour him that much. <sighs> the rich live their lives. The poor survive them. 
Such it has always been. Such it always will be. For what little it's worth, Archie Garrison won't be having any future encounters with the dream folks. I've at least seen to that. Oh, wonderful. A punishment that truly fits the crime. It might not be much, Coda, but it's something. The case may have been over, but it wasn't closed. The rest of Cloud City might be able to turn a blind eye, ignore transgressions when the perpetrators and their wealth belong to the very highest levels. I wouldn't. I couldn't. Once I become aware of the filth hiding behind the blank eyes of their perfect somas, I couldn't pretend it wasn't there. I'd seen the filth in Westing and Archie Garrison, been made aware of the nature of their crimes. And until the day they were fairly compensated for their wrongdoing, I would be watching. This has been Cloud City Sonata, Part 4. Orchestration, Transcribed, and Rewired. Written and directed by Ash Seguente. And edited by Eric Seguente. Theme composed by Amy Young. Featuring Emma Laslett as Roxanne. Moira Dakin as Screw Loose Lou. Michael E. Fremantle as Valentine Hoyt. Emma Laslett as Roxy. Amy Young as Westing Garrison. Elaine Dredgel as Archer Garrison. Daisy McNamara as the Neurosomaticist. Kit Patterson as Metal Mouth. Emma Laslett as Roxanne Prime, and Vic Collins as Dakota Gold. To find out more about the show, visit dakotagold.lawofnames.com or join the Law of Names Discord at discord.lawofnames.com. Thanks for listening. Don't worry, more Dakota Gold is coming. Watch this space for our second installment, Murder at 1.28 Hertz. So, uh, what's your name, my man? Oh, um, Greg. Oh, we grip. Is it normal for humans to be this <coughs> odious? Lord, give me the strength to exercise this demon. Actually, can we just order? Fine, what'll you have? Forest to kill, take bits of leshy. Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry! Steve, what the fuck are we supposed to do with the body? Dave, where are you? Go, come back to life. Dave! Here. What is it? Be not afraid of our savior. <laughs> The Devil's Plaything is a new horror comedy by Tequacha Theatre Productions. Listen to it wherever you get podcasts.